Uh, next presentation is about caretaking of Debian finances by Martin uh, Meitschleimer and Martin Wurtel. Sorry. You're both, both names that no one can pronounce. <laughs> and, and we just discussed whether we should be adding some more Martins to, to the team. Um, so this, uh, this talk, and so we, so basically I submitted a talk uh, a while ago um, and then didn't hear anything. And so I assumed it wasn't accepted, but apparently it is accepted. Um, but I, I think it's more really like a, like a buff. Um, it's really just to, to show you what we are planning to do um, and then have a discussion um, to see what the, the needs of different people are. Um, so we, we'll just give a brief overview of, of the organization uh, in terms of money and other assets um, with, with Debian and its trusted organizations. Um, then we will describe the different tasks um, that the Debian auditor uh, is, is going to do. And then we will talk about the next steps. So that's the, the things we will do soon. Um, and so just briefly about the, the terminology. So the Debian auditor, um, I, I don't actually think it's a good name. Um, but because if you actually look at, at what at the tasks that are involved, uh, most of them actually really about uh, financial recording and reporting. Um, and the other problem with, with the name auditor is that whenever you talk to people, you know, they're really worried and ask, you know, what did I do wrong? <laughs> you know, they think that we're the, the Spanish Inquisition. Um, so maybe we want to change the name to something more neutral. Um, the, the other um, thing is an asset. Um, because that's what we will talk about a lot. So an asset is basically something you own. So it could be money, it could be hardware, you know, domain names, whatever. And the liability is something that you owe. Um, so for example, outstanding reimbursement for, for expenses. Um, so the, the Debian auditors, um, so look, uh, who is not here. Um, and then um, a, a few months ago, um, Suck was, was looking for some volunteers to, to help with this team, and I foolishly uh, told him that I'm currently interested in learning more about accounting. Um, <laughs> and yeah, yeah, never talk to Suck, it's a really bad idea. Um, and so basically, that's when I, when I sort of opted uh, to, to help out with, with, with this team. Um, but, but like I said, I'm really just learning about it, so I'm, I'm not an expert at all. And so a few days ago, I asked Martin, who is a real expert, who's actually, who's, whose day job is financial reporting, um, I asked him whether from time to time um, it would be okay if I ask him some questions. But as it turns out, um, I think he's actually joining the team and, and maybe I'm going to be his slave and he's actually gonna <laughs> do everything, which is the, the small tasks. Um, so I, I think it's uh, a good team. Thanks. Um, <laughs> so basically, I think Debian is, is really uh, interesting, um, the way things are, are structured, because Debian, in a legal sense, doesn't actually exist. It's not a legal entity. Um, so normally, you know, you would have Debian, and Debian would just own money, but that's not the case. So what actually uh, is the case is that that there are other organizations, and we call them trusted organizations, and they hold assets on behalf of Debian. And historically, the, 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 the big two have been SBI, who has been handling uh, money in the States, um, and FFIS uh, in Germany and, and Europe. Um, and, and over the last few years, uh, a number of smaller organizations have also um, come into existence, like Debian UK, um, Debian Switzerland, I think there is Debian Japan. There are a, a lot of those regional organizations that also um, hold uh, assets and, uh, um, on behalf of Debian. <clears throat> so, so what does Debian actually have? Um, and that's going to be uh, one of the big, big tasks is to actually keep track of, of, of what we have. So we have money um, you know, in, in Germany, in, in the States, um, in Brazil. Um, we have some hardware, we have some um, servers which are controlled by, by DSA um, and which are owned by Debian. 
which we, we, we have other servers which are no, not owned by Debian but controlled by DSA. And then we also have some, some hardware um, that, that is not controlled by DSA but still owned by Debian. So we, and historically we haven't kept a very good track of, of, of you know, what is the hardware, who has it, what is it being used for, those, those kind of things. Um, we also have video hardware and, and you know, all kind of other things. Then Debian owns a number of trademarks and we also have domain names. Um, and for example, with the domain name, um, once we keep track of it, um, it will be interesting because we can also keep track of the, the expiration day um, and make sure that the dom domain is going to be renewed. Um, so what are the, the tasks? So the, I think uh, well, one of the, the big tasks is, is going to be to define procedures. Um, so for example, the, the, there are actually some informal procedures already. For example, in terms of the, the reimbursements for, for Debian expenses, um, at the moment it basically works that you ask SAC um, and then SAC approves an expense um, and then we figure out how it's being paid. Um, so for example, if it's in, you know, if you're in the States, then it makes sense to, to, for SBI to pay. But if you're in Germany or Europe, then it makes sense for FFIS to pay. Um, and lately, um, SAC has started ceasing all of his approvals to the auditor email address. So we know when something has been approved. And the idea behind that is once we obtain uh, the, the financial records of, of all the different trusted organizations, um, then we can compare every expense to an approval email. And if there is no approval email, then we can ask, you know, why what does, was that expense made? Uh, what, what is it for? The other thing, um, we think it might be useful to have some criteria um, and some procedures for those trusted organizations. For example, um, you know, we can say that um, there has to be a Debian developer involved in the organization. We can say that you have to report um, your financial data to Debian, you know, every quarter. And if you do, don't do that, you, you, you're not a trusted organization anymore. Those, those kind of things. Um, and we have also been working, uh, we just had a discussion yesterday with the events people um, to see how we can keep track of t-shirts and, and, and other things, uh, merchandising for, for conferences. The, the other big task is the um, financial accounting and, and reporting. So, so the basic idea is that, like I said, you have those different organizations that, ho that hold money and they make some expenses on behalf of Debian. So for example, Debcon travel reimbursements or some sprints. Um, and the idea would be that those organizations make those uh, transactions um, available to us and we would load them in, in, in some kind of accounting system um, to keep track of all of them. And then we can also classify them. Um, so for example, if, if, there, if there is an expense for, for a sprint, uh, we can say that, yeah, that, that is an exp expense for, for a sprint. Um, and one thing we need to do is figure out how we, we're going to classify those things, because you could say uh, it's an expense for, for travel, it's an expense for accommodation, but probably we don't care about that le level of detail. We probably just care about, you know, is it a sprint, is it a, a depth conf, is it, it's, is it something else? Um, and, and I think the next step is going to be to look at the, the reports produced by like KDE and GNOME to see what kind of details they report. And also just to, to see for ourselves, you know, what, what kind of level of detail is interesting for us to know. Um, the, the other thing uh, is to keep track of expenses uh, that have been pledged. So for example, the SAC, so sometimes someone comes to SAC and says, I want to organize a sprint. Um, and it's going to cost roughly 2,000 euro. And then SAC says, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, please keep me posted. Um, and then the other people go off and organize the sprint. Um, but at that time, they haven't submitted any expenses yet. But at the same time, SAC wants to know, yeah, there, there are 2,000 euro that we're probably going to spend in, in the future. Um, and, and so th those are things we want to keep track of simply so SAC knows you know, how much money is there, how much money has been pledged but not spent yet. And similarly, there might be a sponsor who says, well, I'm going to donate that much of, you know, that amount of money, 
but he hasn't actually done so yet. Um, the other thing, as I mentioned, track uh, various as assets um, and then also do the um, one thing we haven't done is even though we receive donations um, is to actually show people what we do with, with their money, you know, how we spend it and how those uh, expenses improve Debian. And, and I think that's really something we need to do um, to produce some financial statements that show, you know, we have put that much money into sprints, we have put that much money into DebConf and, and those kind of things. Well, the idea is, uh, how would, will we do that? We will retrieve the different financial data from each uh, trusted body. Uh, those uh, data come in dif from dif different jurisdictions, so we need to somehow streamline those data, so make it comparable. We have the issue of currency translations. We have uh, real, we have US dollars, we have Swiss francs, we have euros, we have... Uh, we have Uh, it might be necessary to do some consolidation, for example, if we transfer money from uh, Debian Swiss to FFIS, like we do for currently for the Brazilian reimbursement process, we need to add a consolidation level. Uh, we definitely want to step towards the accrual-based approach, so we can start with financial planning, uh, like, uh, for example, in uh, money that has been pledged for sprints, money that has been pledged to DebConf, but will be paid probably only after it's over. Uh, uh, then basically hardware replacement schedules, we will need to know, okay, in the next two years, we will need to spend like 15, 15K on new servers at what time, because they have reached end of life. Uh, so to give the DPL much more financial background to, to have a better resource planning. So far, it seems we will end up doing enterprise resource planning, and uh, the best option so far seems to be open ERP. We've been looking a bit in, inside uh, uh, this software. We mainly know that, for example, Creative uh, uses it, and so far it seems it, it, it has everything inside we, we will need uh, to get the finished state, uh, statements out. Yeah, and, and potentially it could, also, uh, it could also be used to track things like inventory, like the t-shirts, those kind of things. So it has a, a lot of functionality. Yeah, domain name and expiration and all that stuff. Well, why do we do this? We want to help the DPL to make decisions. We want to keep track of pledges received and given. Uh, we already mentioned the hardware replacement battle and also, it's interesting, where is the money and how can we do a cash flow in case of reimbursements? Uh, only a minor issue for the Debian auditor is actually auditing stuff. We will compare the annual reports by the trusted party with the data that they provided us beforehand. We compare entries uh, from organizations with uh, DPL approval mails, check procedures of those organizations, uh, but it should only be a very minor task. The next step, we've already started identifying organizations that hold Debian money. We've gone into contact with the treasury bodies uh, of those organizations, uh, with most of them. And the next step are then, if we have all the data, setting our chart of accounts after looking at the GNOME project and the KDE project, uh, get OpenERP installed, we already opened the ticket, it will run on DSA hardware, uh, and then create the procedures. Since we are all about transparency, it is for us very important that our accounting system runs on, on Debian hardware, and uh, basically we want to have, once it's uh, uh, complete and set up, uh, full read access for every Debian developer, so to have a maximum of transparency and trust. Any questions? Ideas? Okay. 
Um, which are, um, my question is about, um, okay, transparency, you were um, already treating it. Um, which are the, um, okay, the policy for, uh, let, um, for um, okay, letting no details about Debian financing, both to Debian members, such as, for example, developers, I'd say, and people outside, De outside Debian. So I, I think we uh, should have uh, an idea of um, how, okay, how, um, how precisely, how deeply we can uh, let people know about our finances. Uh, are there already established practices in this? The idea is to have sort of a management account with goals mainly to the DPL and is accept, uh, accessible for all Debian developers and there will be an external uh, uh, reporting which is basically for our sponsors where our main goal is to tell them, okay, we spent, we, we got so much money, we spent it on sprints and in the sprints we achieved these and these goals. So it will be very aggregated on the case-by-case -case basis. And if I can just add, so basically in the past we didn't have any reports w w whatsoever. And then um, Luke uh, a, a few months ago started um, writing some internal reports. So he sent something to Debian Private. But so far we have never made any public reports. And I think there has been a discussion about, on Debian Private about that, whether we should be reporting that to the public or not. But I, th I think the fact is that every non-profit, if you look at, at any other organization, makes those public um, statements just about you know, how much assets do you hold, what's your income, what's your expenses. Um, and so we, we are going to do the same. It's just resp uh, you know, because we rely on, on donors, and so it's, it's you know, responsible for us to let them know you know, what we do with their money. Yeah, so uh, just a brief comment on that before passing the word to Ian. Uh, so according to constitution, we are bounded to uh, let the project know how we use Debian money. So this is uh, already required, and I, I think, and actually I decided after the decision which has been mentioned to actually go fully public. So I think it's, uh, as they said, a duty of Debian in general because we are here for openness, but also something we, we really should do if we are asking for donation, the minimum you can do is letting people know how you use their money. But that said, I don't think that the reason why it hasn't been done up to now is malice or whatever. It's just that we have never had some established process and some people willing to implement them. So it's great that now we have people who are actually, we have the knowledge and we are interested in doing that, in making that work. Yeah. Um, thanks. Um, this, this all sounds absolutely excellent. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing everything being much better organized. Uh, one thing that occurs to me is it sounds like this is going to be a lot of work. Um, are you all happy doing this work? Do you, do you have a sufficient supply of volunteers? Um, is there some other approach that might be possible? Oh, we can always use an additional pair of hands. <laughs> <laughs> I was afraid that might be what you were going to say. Um, <laughs> um, I'm just thinking that accountancy is not something that's generally very fun. I've done it occasionally for, for small, much smaller projects and um, for something the size of Debian it's going to be quite a lot of, of fairly boring clerical work and um, it occurs to me that this might be a useful thing indeed that we might spend some of our money on. Well the thing is we want to set it up initially and uh, we already talked to the Devon CH guys and they think of if we can provide them a, a sane default that they move their accounting directly into, into uh, the project, into the open ERP system once we have it running, if we can get many of our bodies streamlined or basically get via scripting their data inside. I know FFIS has an SQL interface. So it shouldn't be too much of a task to get the basic data synchronized. And then the rest is mainly getting the default procedure set up and then basic consolidation runs out of self. I, I'm head of group accounting at Treasury for a company with something like 120 legal entities, which I've been working for four years on with monthly full reports and uh, stock publishing. It, it, if you get your ERP your system sort of really set up, it's not that much of a work to keep it running, however, getting it there is like three to six months. Thank you. Excellent. 
I had a very quick question um, about the sort of global approach to this and about the um, consolidation that you mentioned and the benefits. I don't want to doubt in any way that uh, you have the capacities and, or maybe the capacities, but definitely not the competencies to do a consolidation across uh, different currencies and across different legal entities. It is a tough job to do that. Um, and I just simply wonder what the benefits are that we are going to get out of a consolidated budget, a consolidated financial statement that every year compared to what we have at the moment, which is more or less a chaotically organized couple of entities. And you know, when something happens in Switzerland, then we'll take care of it. And if something happens in Austria, then maybe Debian Switzerland takes care of it too, or maybe FFIS is faster. And, and we just kind of like report that to you, and you kind of keep track. What are the benefits that you think of having a closed accounting system well, you want to, for example, if you want to know we have to spend like 30k on whatever next year, we want to know how much money do we have now. Well, we have it in like 10 different currencies. You can't just sum it up. You need to somehow convert it. And if you have it in the system, it's like uh, just a click away. Sure. Um, but you will know that by the 31st of December for every year if you consolidate. And then uh, if in August we need 30,000 for new hardware, uh, your financial statements are not going to be up to date anymore. So what you'll end up doing is asking Debbie in Switzerland how much is it that you have at the moment. Um, okay, you, you, do have, you do have your, uh, your centralized system, so you, you will actually have an overview of that. But what, is it really that often the case that we need this sort of information to warrant all the effort that we need to put into this? I, well, I'm, not, I, I'm with you, you know, accounting mm -hmm. can be actually be fun. It's a, it's a challenge to do something like this. And I, I'm, I'm willing, as Debbie in Switzerland treasurer, to, to cooperate with you on this, but I don't see the, the benefit quite yet, other than the geeky aspect. Well, and may, maybe I can just add something in the meantime. I mean, w one thing is that at the moment, you know, for example, FFIS and SPI, they hold money for Debian. But, but for them, they, they don't care you know, how we spend it. They don't classify any of those expenses. So we need to do that anyway. I mean, f maybe for Debian Switzerland, because you're really only about Debian, we could tell you, we could give you some guidelines, you know, how to classify the expenses. And then you could do it you know, by yourself. And we wouldn't have to do it centrally. But for someone like SPI and FFIS, we have to do it anyway, because for them, you know, they don't look at the trans transactions. They, they don't care. Um, and if we have to do it for them, then, uh, you know, doing it for a few other organizations is probably not that much more work. I mean, that, that's the way I see it. And also we will have, we intend to have quarterly updates, so we will have quite accuracy for, for our purpose anyway. So if I understand correctly, Martin, part of your question is uh, whether there is value in having like a sample of um, one month with respect to a sample of 12 months. And you say that if the trusted organization reports only once per year, consolidating is not m much of a value. Is that it? No? Not really. my, my question was, no matter how, much, how long the period is, whether it's quarterly or yearly, um, there, is, there is definitely benefit to having a consolidated financial statement and an overview of all your assets and your liabilities and even like knowledge of the cash flow inside Debian is actually probably going to um, increase sponsorship, I think, uh, or it has the potential to do that. So there are, there are benefits to it. At the, at the same time, um, there are, there's a lot of work that needs to flow into it and I simply wonder whether the work that needs to go into it is worth the benefits that we get out of it as compared to the chaotic system that we have now. It, it's not like so we my, are going my, to my do real case. IFRS based financial statements on consolidating with all those uh, notes and, and that stuff. It's 99% of it is just an accumulation, including a currency translation, which is basically once you have the data in, the program does the work for you. So the main so, use case, I think, is mine as DPL when Zobel mails me as DSA and tell me, okay, we need the replacement of 10,000 euro machine. Maybe we get it donated by someone, but maybe not. And in the maybe not case, I need to know, okay, we have this current 
computing power with this degree of certainty. And the degree of certainty is the money pledged, but not yet spent, of course. So the much we have consolidated parts of our budget, the more we have consolidated part of our budget, the easier it is to answer that. So it's not Boolean, of course. We can have part of our trusted organization which are consolidating the budget as we see them now and part which are not. But for that use case, the more it is consolidated, the better. And I think it's not only about money, it's also about trademarks and domain names we hold. We should, we should take care of that. We are currently in some sort of process getting that sorted out and uh, finding out which trademarks Debian already holds is not an easy job, I can tell. Um. Is this on? Yeah. yeah. I absolutely uh, agreed, but we have to distinguish, and maybe this is something we have to agree on what we want to do. We have to distinguish between inventory and financial statement. And if you want to put all of our hardware and our trademarks into a financial statement, well, <laughs> and consolidate that across currencies, good luck. So I. I was once um, treasurer of the Cambridge University Science Fiction Society, um, which has an enormous library. And one of the things that one treasurer once attempted to do was to <laughs> include our library on our financial statement on the balance sheet. Um, and <laughs> um, th this obviously didn't work very well because nobody knew what the library was worth in cash terms. and. Um, Anyway, the library was run separately by the librarian, and um, the amounts of money that the library was worth was definitely much, much bigger than the amount of cash we had. So the whole thing was a bit silly, really. And I, I think it seems to me that Debian is in maybe a, a vaguely similar position. Probably we've got more money, but um, our physical assets and trademarks, don't, we don't regard them ourselves as having financial value, and therefore we probably don't want to deal with them in our accounting system. I think we have to distinguish, uh, since we are using an ERP system, putting something like hardware or licenses in and then signing it in actual well is a different thing. In doubt we can just put it in with an, with an amount of zero because we already spent the money, but we, the, the asset track keeping is, is our main purpose for this stuff. Uh, you, uh, you're talking about using open ERP, is that correct? Sorry? You're, using, you're planning on using open ERP? Well, yeah. Uh, sorry, I was, I was basically reading my email. Um, yeah, I tried to use the open ERP for a very long time and b battered my head against various things, including the fact that it's maintained in Launchpad by people that don't apply to bugs. So, yeah, if you're writing open ERP yourself, that's a really good idea. You do what you like. But if you think that open ERP is as good as the, its publicity is, then, uh, uh, well, I was driven close to suicide before I changed to Ledger CLI. And, you know, Ledger CLI, you just put it in, a, put it in Vim, go, <laughs> easy. <laughs> Everybody well, can understand it. There's four implementations of it, one in Haskell. Uh, so you might want to think about that instead. If you have anything better. Yeah, well, Le Ledger CLI lets you do sums. Uh, open ERP... The, the illustration is that I was trying to get a chart of accounts for the UK sorted out, but I'm not an accountant, so yeah, okay, I was starting from the wrong, wrong place, really. The chart of accounts that was, li uh, the module that was said chart UK seems to have been derived from uh, SQL Ledger, or Ledger, uh, one of those, and uh, and it was completely broken before it was extracted from SQL Ledger, and then they broke it even more so that things like furniture got added to VAT, okay? Because what they'd done was they took the numerical codes for all the things, and then they assumed the numerical codes meant something and did the hierarchy based on the numbers, not on the sense of the thing. Okay, so I reported a bug against OpenRP, and it would lay dormant, and the bug said, basically, this is a toxic disaster. Anybody that tries to use this uh, module will become very angry. You should just remove it. And it took them eight months to triage it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's another module that uh, w was the actual uh, sort of closest attempt to a UK chart of accounts that had a bug in it where it would add the... Uh, 
expenditure VAT to the purchase VAT. So your VAT liability would just go up all the time because <laughs> no matter how much you bought, <laughs> that bug took a little bit less, about three months to fix. Well, it, it's sort of contribution hostile, open ERP. Well, I, I don't expect us to run into many of those problems no. because all the bodies are doing their accounting and tax filings themselves. We just take the figures, uh, group them by the chart of accounts and make a reporting. We don't do any tax filings. We don't do, yeah. yeah. Sure, but you know, if you find a bug in it, yeah. good luck. <laughs> I just wanted to, before, before we talk about the technicalities and how we maintain things, you meant in Git, by the way, not in Vim. But, uh, <laughs> I no, hope. I mean, uh, you can edit Ledger CLI. It's just a text file. You do your accounting in Vim, and then you put that version of the, the month's accounts into Git, and then you can see exactly what you changed. It's exactly. quite marvelous. Um, before we get onto that level, though, can we can we just agree uh, from what I understood that you, Mar Martin, to the right, um, <laughs> said we're not going to try to activate our assets, but we are going to have an inventory of our assets, and we're going to have a balance sheet that is only currencies and liabilities. Yeah. Okay. And so, in, in terms of Ledger, so I I also use Ledger. And that, that is what I was planning to use. Um, cool. However, I, I, I don't think it handles multiple currencies very well. Um, like, uh, I mean, because I, I, I track my personal finance um, and I ran into a lot of issues. And so even, even though I think it would be easy to get started with Ledger, I think doing any of the reporting is going to be a nightmare. Um, and so, so Martin suggested Opmar uh, ERB, and I don't, I don't know it, but it, I mean, it looks really interesting. I, I guess we would just have to take a look at it and see if it works. I mean, I, I agree, it looks really interesting. I spent, you know, six months that I could have been consulting trying to make it work yeah. for myself. So, uh, but then I'm a rubbish accountant, so, uh, you know, it, it's yeah. probably mostly my fault. It seemed, well, to, it seemed to be very good at uh, when you had uh, an invoice in. Uh, a different currency from your default. It was very good at coming up with a fractional amount of tax that you can't settle so that you can't close the invoice and things like that. It's got lots of little edge cases that you can bump into and you know, I don't know how to fix it. Any more questions? Issues? Well, from the perspective of the, one of the treasurers then, um, what is it that you expect us to give you every quarter? Uh, whatever you report, mostly an income statement. That's Gewinn uh, Verlustrechnung? Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Basically, I, basically your bank account movements. And yeah, okay, that and, and possibly, sure. Um, and possibly the inventory, yeah. like of the shirts that we have and all this kind of stuff, but not the balance sheet. Yeah, but you don't need to do a physical inventory on a quarterly basis, no, just what you think you have, best estimate. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you.